Hello everyone, welcome back to the Kukuli Bushcraft channel. Okay, so the subject of today's video is making a traditional Finnish Poco knife from a stick tang blade blank, a bit like this one. Uh, this one was actually hand forged by a guy who was making knives in the uh, in the 1960s. His, his granddaughter inherited a whole workshop full of these things not long ago. I managed to get hold of a couple of them. So uh, this knife's already got a bit of a story, which is which is nice. It's nice for a knife to have a story. If you make your own, you can add little bits of little bits of wood from different places. Maybe a bit of a bit of olive wood from your holiday in Spain, for example, or whatever. It's I think it's kind of nice if you have a knife with a story, and as if you make it yourself, it's already got a bit of a story. So that's good. Okay, so I've not actually made very many knives like this, but what I have done is helped a lot of other people to make traditional Finnish porcos from from a blade blank. Uh, those people being the guides, and uh, most of this video is going to be the guides making knives, uh, particularly Shania, uh, because she actually finished hers, which... Uh, the other guides in the video haven't finished yet, but we've been doing this for uh, about six years now at the at the farm. That the guides, when they've got time, uh, make their own knives. So hopefully this video will help a few of you to make stick tang knives as well. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start to do something with this. Then we're gonna get on with the footage of the guides making their knives. Okay, so hope you enjoy the video. Birch bark. It's a uh, very traditional material for uh, porco handles. So I'm using my fish shears, a uh, very underrated tool. Uh, I take these when I go hiking and fishing, end up using them for all sorts. Okay, so you see we've got these lines going across the bark. Uh, there's a technical term for them. I can't for the life of me remember what <laughs> what it is. But yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger them. Because along the lines it tears. So just to make it a bit stronger. I've cleaned the bark up. I've got all of this left over. I'm going to stick that in a Ziploc bag. And I'll do it for the next time I light a fire. Okay, so I'm cutting at an angle. Okay, so that that'll do for around the bolster where it wants to be a bit thinner. Okay, so I'm going to find a roughly central point. Make a, a mark either side, hole punch, obviously you can use a drill or whatever. Two little holes. Get a knife. Cut out the centre. Then that'll slide on there. Then another one and another one. Uh, for birch bark, I usually use ordinary wood glue. You can actually heat it up and the oils in the bark uh, will 
yeah, glue everything together for you. I don't really know enough about how how to do that to actually dare to give it a go. Wood glue works. As if you're using wooden pieces, antler, anything like that, I generally use either two part epoxy resin or Gorilla Glue, depending depending on the size of the hole. Also, when it comes to drilling the holes, I've got some paper here. You can either drill a big hole, and then when you do come to the burning stage. you'll end up with something like that or you can aim to get the hole to be exactly the same size as the tank which will involve drilling a series a series of small holes and then burning and filing out uh, in between the holes so as you've got a slot to fit your tank in so it's nice and tight this is the method that I generally go for this method's a lot faster you'll have a gap if you use Gorilla Glue it'll fill the gap as if you use epoxy resin you can also fill the gap but, uh, but it's going to be a bit harder to actually fill the gap obviously you're not going to know as if you've actually filled the gap or not uh, well, anyway. Enjoy the rest of the video. So Marika, tell us what you're doing. A knife. <laughs> so I'm trying to make this holster fit here. Uh, so I need to file it down. What did you call it? Holster? No. Bolster. Bolster. Nearly, nearly. <laughs> Well, your English is certainly better than my Finnish. What's it called in Finnish? Mm, so, no, it can be sulky. I don't know. This is your knife, she's making a knife. Here it is. So she started it last uh, <laughs> last autumn. She's got as far as scratching the tang down a little bit, give a key for the glue. Uh, taking a little bit off the bolster to make it fit. And now she's shaping pieces of wood, drilling out and filing. And they're getting stacked up like so okay filing go on okay. <laughs> so what we should be aiming for here is to get uh, as tight a fit as possible okay so what Filippo's doing here He's uh, taking a bit of metal off the end of his tank so as he can get this little end piece on. So he's just rounding it off, making it much smaller because the, uh, the end of the tank is too big to fit through there at the moment. Okay, now Filippo's peening the end over. So, uh, with a ball peen hammer, the round end 
the end of the tang is getting rounded off so as it won't slip over the end piece to hold everything together nice and firmly. Let's have a look. There's no movement in that, so I'd say that was about ready. One thing to mention is you need a gap here because otherwise what can happen is, is if you hammer the the knife down to that point you're going to start to push all of the pieces off uh, so just a little thing to bear in mind if you've got a gap then you can make sure that doesn't happen right so you want to go down to the bolster all the way around here and uh, the back's looking good it should sweep down and uh, yeah so uh, so here you want a little bit of what I call a fawn's foot that's what it's called on an axe I'm really not sure what it's officially called on a knife and uh, it needs to come in here a little so you want a belly here and then going in here again at the top and that way it should fit your nice your hands quite nicely doesn't want to be too fat doesn't want to be too thin it wants to be that thickness more or less and oval okay That's looking good. Yeah, I'd just uh, take a little bit more off there. And uh, maybe a tiny, tiny bit where your little finger goes. Okay. So... Yeah, so you want a belly where these two fingers go and it needs to go in where the other two go. That way you get a nice, a nice firm grip. And uh, yeah. right. thing I didn't mention about the finger guard is with the traditional Scandinavian sheath, the finger guard kind of gets in the way. <laughs> okay, so that's just ready for some sandpaper at the, at the guide house now. Awesome. <laughs>